Hey, welcome on back to the channel, y'all. Glad you're here. We are going to be grilling up a crappie today, a big one. Normally, I just throw them in the grease. You know, those nice 10, 13 inchers. But when you get like a 15 or a 16, I'm going to show y'all a way to cook them that is really good. But first, I have to find my chickens. They were over here, and now they've gone somewhere. I just got back from the farm store. And the way I always get my chickens back into their run is I shake a bag. I do a little bag shaking. They absolutely 100% will lose their beaks over mealworms. Now th these things are expensive. This is like 25 bucks for this bag, but it calls them in every time. And then I got this stuff right here. It's just kind of like a fun scratch mix. It was only like 10 bucks. Only about four or five of them I can actually go grab, pick up. They'll let me do that. The rest of them are just wild. And while I was at the old tractor supply getting that stuff, I was telling them I got, I got a mosquito issue and they told me I have got to try one of these deals right here. And I've been seeing these on social media. I didn't know if they worked. I was like, are these BS or what? And they're like, no, these really work. We sell them out just about every day. Uh, we get them in and everybody's been saying they're, they work really good. So I'm gonna try them out and see. Have you guys seen these things? This is a Spartan Mosquito. Uh, eradicates mosquitoes population for up to 90 days so i think there might be a couple brands of these but this one is made by the spartans chickens there you are there you are chickens so they see me out here waving my arms around they know something's going on i'm gonna fire that grill up here in just a second but i gotta get them all wrangled in come on the duck especially knows that sound you know what's up Get it on in here. And pull the old bait and switch on them though. Yeah, you're gonna get a few mealworms, but we're gonna try out these garden grains here. Okay, I'm gonna get it. Oh, they're like, what is this? This is not mealworms. Oh yeah, take yourself a little bath here, buddy. Uh, that one right there is a maverick and will not. That is the absolute maverick that I have to wrangle in with the worms every time. Almost done. So this is what I'm gonna be cooking the crappie on today. This is my big green egg. I have had this for years. I love this thing. It is fantastic for cooking steaks, chicken, really big meats. Like that's where it excels. You can even do pizzas in it and everything. It acts as an oven. But I do wish I had some sort of smaller grill that I could fire up real quick, you know, with just some burners and just do quick stuff like this, like do the fish, do some burgers, you know, do a quick little like chicken breast or two. This is kind of a process. It takes really 30 minutes for it to get going and get acclimated. Maybe next Father's Day, OSG, if you're watching, you know, just take a little note of that. I think we could all benefit here at the Treehouse from that. But while we're waiting on this to heat up, it is time to go slap the sides off of old Sakalai. I never fillet fish in here. OSG is still gone for one more day. If she knew I was doing this, she would probably be upset. So everybody just be cool. Nobody say anything. Everything's gonna be all right, okay? So this is our crappie we caught yesterday. I've had it in the Dometic, had it in a little ice. Uh, it is a certified Magnum. Wabam! Now for some weird reason, there is a 3.3 inch soft saucy swimmer in there with its tail bitten off. I, what in the world happened there? Surely that fish did not eat that thing and regurgitate. What? I don't know. I'm confused. Okay, buddy, we're just going. Just gonna give you a little water on the sides here. Gotta get that goo off of you. Okay, that fish had a very good slime coat on it. So what's gonna be different about this fillet? Normally I take a big crappie like this and I'll cut it up and then I'll actually split it up into three different pieces of the filet and then I'll, I'll put it in the grease. And just while we got this thing on the measuring board, let me just take a gamble. Oh, it only goes to 13, it's well over that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say 15 and three quarters. This is fish, it's quite the big one. I'm gonna stick its big old face here in the jaw clamp. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take my, uh, 
my nice custom fillet knife, since we're only doing one fish here, I'm going to go right down the back of that gill slit and then slide the side completely off this fish. There's, there's, I'm going to go around the rib cage, but the rest is just coming off. We're getting scales, we're getting skin, we're getting goo, we're getting all of that. We're going to take that and we're going to use that like you would a salmon where you're cooking it skin side down on the grill. You could technically do this with a smaller one, but it'd just be kind of a hassle. Like this, this is reserved, at least for me, for the big boys. Turn this big boy on its side. Get that nice little flexible fillet knife. Get right down there on that spine. Sometimes I'll take the blade when I'm going down the spot and I'll just do this. That way you're working it around those bones. If you get stuck, just kind of manipulate that blade a little bit. That'll normally help, especially on a big one where you're really having to go over some bigger bones. Gosh, it's a big fillet. It's a lot of meat. Just poke through here. And go all the way and then cut it completely off. Wow, bam. That's beautiful. Okay, make sure to get every single scale of the wifey's kitchen. Get our carcass out of here. Get the goo. So I set the fillets with the skin and everything on some paper towels just to sort of get the goo off. And I did a little rinsing on there as well. But now we're going to transfer that to some tin foil. One and a two. Set those right in the middle, just like so. A little bit of olive oil. We're just gonna take that, rub it on the top so we can stick our spices to it. We're gonna go heavy lemon pepper. A little bit of garlic salt. Woo! I like a little bit of heat, so I'm gonna just do a touch of cayenne. Cayenne! If you got a fresh lemon, go ahead and cut it in half. Squeeze it on top. Set them on in there. Take yourself a little butter. Little slices like this. Cover it. One, two, front and back. And there you go. We're gonna wrap this up now. Just lightly fold it. I'm going to cook all these steamy juices inside and then I'm going to let it cook straight skin down just a little bit. Give it that little char, a little crispy on the outside. We got our crappie fillets waiting to go on right here. I'm actually taking the whole fish right now and I'm just uh, kind of searing the sides real quick. I'm going to give this to the chickens. The chickens absolutely love fish. And I actually gave them some of my leftover cooked bluegill the other day. This was after I had, you know, I had eaten a bunch of them and I had like three or four of them left. I gave it to them with the, the crispy outer crust and everything and they just, I mean, there was like nothing left but just little tiny bones. So I know the flock is going to enjoy a nice crappie skeleton with a little leftover meat on it. So I've got the grill set at, um, it's about 300 right now. I want it to be about 350. So I've got the top open. Any of you all familiar with the egg, you know how that works, but if, you're, if you've got a regular grill, just put it at what you would your oven, you know, around 325, 350. There's not gonna be any flipping involved once we set these on the grill. So I'm gonna take this off, set it back on the old board here. We're gonna replace that with our tin foiled fillets. Now I'm gonna set a timer for 10 minutes. And we'll see where that ends up right there. Then if it's looking good, I'm gonna take them out of the tin foil and we're gonna set it directly on the grill. Okay, who is ready for some protein margaritas? Get you some of that. Penny was the first to figure it out. Now everybody else is gonna start coming in. Okay, 10 minutes is up. Let's take a peep. Here it's sizzling in there. Oh yeah. 
Oh yeah. That's looking nice. Y'all check this out. Yes, sir. So now that we're like 75% cooked through, I'm going to just slide them off of the tin foil and give them just a little bit of little char on the edges. I'm gonna take a little spatula. Just to assist in the slide here. Just a minute or two like this and we should be golden. So while I was in the tin foil, we got the nice butter just bubbling around the edges. We got uh, the lemon juices that have soaked in. Now we're just trying to get a little bit of crust on that skin uh, and the scales underneath just to give it a, a hardness and hopefully it'll just slide right off of that. Okay, it's been about three or four minutes starting to see some of the juices coming out of the, come out of the center of the fish. It's a lot of times how you can tell if it is done or not. And I just like to take a fork poke it and see what the texture is like. It should just flake, but if it's still squishy, then you know it still needs a little bit more cooking. Y'all, this smells amazing. And it looks so good. I whipped up a uh, little bit of a mayonnaise-based, mayonnaise ketchup-based sauce. Um, got a little pepper in there. Since all I really know how to do is grill, um, there's nothing to go with this. It's just straight up crappie protein. Okay, now let's just pop the end off of here. This should just slide right off the skin. Yep. Yep. We gotta get a close up of that. Okay, can y'all see how it just popped right off of this skin right here? The underside is nice and crispy, and then the top side is just white, succulent meat heaven. There's probably not a bad way to cook crappie, but this is something I reserve for only the bigs. Look at that. Oh my. Oh man. God, that'd be so good on a sandwich too. Like just a little bit of lettuce and ketchup. Oh, that's fantastic. What's so awesome is you just take your fork and pull towards you and it slides right off of there, every single bit of it. Oh my gosh. Wow. Oh, got a little bit of that cayenne on top. You can taste the lemons. It is not only the taste with crappie, it's the texture. That's what makes it so special. It just kind of melts in your mouth. And what's great about this fish, even though it's summertime, water's really hot on the surface. This came out of like 25, 30 feet of water. So down there, the water temperatures are cooler. Anytime you're catching fish in, in cooler waters, they're gonna taste better. So this bottom part right here, I'm really interested to see how this comes out. It's normally an area that kind of gets discarded and it just pulls, pulls right off of that skin. It's fantastic. Now a single scale or bone. Man, that's beautiful. Just comes right off of that skin. Okay. Y'all, I'm gonna enjoy the rest of this fish, but if you're ever in like a bass fishing situation and you just, you catch one of these, good sized crappie, don't let it go. Put it in the well, do it up like this, you'll be happy you did. And look at the skin and the scales. Whew. That fish right there, y'all, that'll make you wanna be an outdoorsman. Ah, uh, me. Gosh, you can only get those if you go out and catch them. Just got an Amazon box in y'all and it's something I've been waiting on, LED fishing light. So speaking of crappies, one of my next videos I wanna make is doing underwater fishing lights. So I've never done this and I wanted to check it out. This isn't the one I'm really waiting on. This one is only I think like 1200 watts or 1500 watts and I ordered a 5000 watt one and that should be just uh, you know the sun under the water hopefully. But one of the reasons I got this particular one and the other one is they plug into a cigarette lighter port, which uh, my battery cells that I have from Dometic and Jackery. Um, interested to see how they power these. If they're powering my little refrigerator down there, I'm sure they'll, they'll power this. So let's plug it in, see how it looks. And let's put, plug in our fishing light. Power on. Whoa, daggum, there it goes. 
Holy cow, let me turn this down. Okay, let there be green light, y'all. That is some Guggen green action right there. So what you do with this, you stick it over the side of your boat. Uh, the cable, I think, is like 20 feet or something. And the fish will come up to the light. You know, bait fish are naturally attracted. That attracts everything else. But the other one looks like about three times the size and it should put out about three or four times uh, the power. So I'm going to wait till that one comes in to do the video, but obviously this one's working and uh, it's going to work perfect with these little power cells I have. That way I don't have to hook it up to like a, uh, you know, the clamps on a battery. It's just easier. Power down. Checking in on the fish. Boy, they have picked it. Just absolutely picked that thing apart. Looks like Peggy is going in. Yep, Peggy's Peggy's going in to lay. Old trusties, they're always laying. Peggy's first drop today. Well, fishing freaks, I would say the circle of life is complete today. Go out, catch a fish, bring it back, clean it, cook it, feed the scraps to your chickens. Chickens get protein, make more eggs, then you eat again. That is an efficient operation right there, and hopefully y'all learned something new to take back to your kitchen. So thank you guys for tuning in today to a tasty addition to the LFG Fishing Vlogs. Y'all keep it locked right here. Subscribe to the channel for more fishing action. Nighttime crappie fishing coming at you soon, and I got some camping trips. Hey, darling, you want to sign it off with me over here? The girls just got home. I'm no longer in bachelor mode. No more naked fish. Now we get some sides to go with our fishes, huh? Okay, love you guys. God bless you. See you on the next one.